If you or a family member have been hurt because of the careless actions of another person, call Walker Texas Lawyer. They'll work to get you the financial compensation and justice you deserve. They have 40 years of experience, and you don't pay unless you win. Call 713-881-9653 today for a consultation or go to walkertexaslawyer.com. Oh, Brad, what have you done now? Broadcasting live from Houston, Texas, and around the world, and around the world, TV host, best-selling author, and radio personality, Brad Gilmore, brings you a collection of conversations with stars from movies. Matthew McConaughey. Brad Gilmore. Mark Wahlberg. Hey, how are you? The legendary Mr. Christopher Lloyd. Christopher, how are we doing? I'm doing good. Great introduction. <laughs> Television. Jimmy Fallon joins us this morning. Jimmy, how you doing, my friend? Good morning. Thank you so much, Brad, for having me. I appreciate this, bud. Kelly Ripa. Brad, thank you for having me. Comedy. Jay Leno joins us. Jay, how you doing? Hey, Brad, what's going on? Chris Tucker is in the building. Chris Tucker, good morning to you. Hey, Brad, good morning to you. How are you? Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias. Good morning. Music. Lola Monroe. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The legendary front man of ACDC, Brian Johnson, joins us right now. Brian, how you doing? Good morning, Brad. What lucky to talk to me. Funny lad. Grammy Award winner Maya joins us. How are you? And more. And more. This is, is the, the collection. collection. Now, now your host, host the, the boat, Brad, Brad Gilmore. Gilmore. And joining us right now in the CW39 Spotlight to talk about the road to WrestleMania and the Royal Rumble, which is going to be going down at Tropicana Field this Saturday, streaming on Peacock. He is the phenomenal one, the former WWE champion himself, AJ Styles. AJ, good morning to you. Good morning. Hey, you know what? This show, the Royal Rumble, is my favorite event on the WWE calendar year. Uh, it's a significant event for you as well, is where you made your debut a few years ago, or eight years ago, I guess now, but you're going to be main eventing Fatal 4 away for the Universal Championship. Um, it's going down you, L.A. Knight, Randy Orton, and the head of the table, Roman Reigns. You know, what are your feelings going into this match? Well, I, I, I listen. Uh, I think we we got to count the the first year that I was in WWE. So I believe that makes it nine. Am I am I right on that? Age sixteen, uh, or whatever it was. My, I'm not good at math. That's why I do this. That's, uh, it does it doesn't matter because it's not important. Uh, what is important is the WWE Championship, and uh, you know I want it back. I, I haven't had it in a while. It's time for Roman Reigns to let loose of the championship and let someone like AJ Styles uh, grab it and run with it. So. But it's just not, it's going to be a hard fought battle because you got two other guys that want it just as bad as I do with Randy Orton and LA Knight. So we'll see what happens. You know, uh, Randy came back a couple of months ago um, in November at the Survivor Series. You came back shortly thereafter after a little hiatus. Both of y'all in the best shape, perhaps ever. The, you know, if you look at the fans, uh, you know, uh, commentary on everything, including what my eyes see, you're in great shape. What was the change that you did in that little hiatus you had? Well, I mean, it was one of those things where I just needed to focus on myself uh, and took responsibility with uh, watching my diet, doing a cold plunge, you know, which has changed my life and uh, also getting in, in the sauna, all that stuff. So I have to dedicate two hours of, you know, to work out to my schedule every day. So it's little things like that. You know, if you want to be better, you got to do better things for your body. And that's what I'm trying to do. And, and listen, I really believe it was. Uh, perfect pictures that you saw taken at the perfect time. I don't think I grew that much or, or lost that much weight. It was just a great picture. Looking real Jack, man, looking real Jack, but you know, it, it's, it's a lot about recovery. I think in this point of your career, you've been wrestling for a very long time. And um, you know, anybody who knows the schedule of a professional wrestler, it's go, go, go. It's fast, fast, fast all the time. And recovery is probably as big at this point in your career as it's ever been. Yeah, um, and that's uh, a, big, a big reason why the, the cold plunge has changed my life, just jumping in that bad boy every day that I'm home. Uh, I, it's not something I want to do. It's something that I need to do. So uh, I, I I get in it every day, and, and this literally changed my life. It's about, you know, maintenance as well, just making sure that I stay, you know, um, in a state of being able to go anytime, anyplace, anywhere. And doing these little things are what makes me able to, to be able to do that. 
And now, um, when you talk about the Royal Rumble, again, this is my favorite show of the year. I mean, WrestleMania is the spectacle. It's the all. It's the granddaddy of them all, whatever you know, adjectives you want to use. But the Royal Rumble is always fun. You never know what's going to happen. What That's what kind of brings me back to the first time AJ Styles was on WWE television. You know, there was rumors on the Internet, as there always was. But those seconds right before you walked out, I'm sure that you re recall them. And do you remember exactly what was going on in your mind before you made that first debut on WWE TV all those years? Uh, uh, I'll never forget it. Uh, it was like, man, I hope people remember me. Uh, that was the biggest thing. I was, I believe, 37 when I when I walked out, 37 years old, and worried that I, I'm not going to get a pop at all. So it was a pleasant surprise to get a uh, fan re reaction the way that I did uh, at the Royal Rumble. Was the Rumble one of those matches that, I mean, even in your time outside of WWE or when you've been in it here for the – for the last several years that you have been is it a match that you kind of look forward to because you know you don't know who you could potentially be mixing it up with i mean last year i know booker t made his you know return after several years at the san antonio alamo dome um is that kind of a one of the majesties of the royal rumble well that's the fun thing about the royal rumble is you actually don't know who's going to show up rumors are rumors until they show up right and uh, we do know a couple of guys that are going to be in there, which is exciting, but we don't know what's going to happen and we don't know who's going to be in there with those guys. So that always makes it fun. Now, um, I, I recall being at a Royal Rumble at the Alamo Dome a, a few years back when you and John Cena mixed it up for the WWE Championship. And I remember watching that in the crowd thinking it was only January, but we already have a match of the year candidate. Um, John announced recently that he's looking to wrap things up in the next few years. You have great chemistry with him. Uh, you also have some experience handling a legend's last match. Is that something that you would like to do is mix it up with Cena one last time before he rides it off into the sunset? I, I think there's a lot of us that would like to mix it up with Cena one last time. And I, I'm definitely one of those guys. Uh, we had some chemistry that I can't explain to, you know, two guys who are, you know, maybe it's opposites attract, I guess you would say. And and me and John are definitely that kind of, you know, dance partners where, you know, it, it was always fun getting in the ring with him. It was always big. It was always special. And it was always great. So I look forward uh, to hopefully before he retires, jumping in the ring with him one more time. What do you think it is about him that, that made him stand out? Because, I mean, people on the internet want to talk about the only, he has the five moves of doom or whatever the case was, but, I think people who know know how great he is in and out of the ring. But but for you, from your perspective, what makes him one of the greats of all time? He's smart. He's probably one of the smartest guys to ever be in the ring. He's uh, I don't know what his IQ is, but I would venture to say it's very close to being a genius. He's just smart, quick witted uh, and knows how to get things done. Listens to the crowd. He's one of the best uh, I've ever been in the ring with. And I'm not saying that he's one of the best wrestlers but he knows how to entertain a crowd better than anyone i've ever been with so uh there's a lot of great things about john but to me that's what sticks out the most is his ability to adjust and perform as the crowd sees what they need you know you, you got to hear him and listen to him and he does that better than anybody you know before you came into the wwe you were regarded as one of the great wrestlers in the world and you continue to hold that title to this day um but what are the things that you learned coming into the WWE that you didn't have in your arsenal before. I ask you that because when I talk to Booker T all the time, when we do our show together, he always mentions, you know, I was a great professional wrestler in WCW. When I came to WWE, I became a great sports entertainer. Um, what are the differences that perhaps you picked up on when you came into the WWE? You know, I've, I've always heard, you know, if you think you're going too fast, slow down. And, uh, or, you know, if you think you're going actually if you think you're going too slow slow down right uh and that's the biggest thing is slow down literally from the entrance to the wrestling and letting fans digest what you're doing it's taking it all in so that you can be a better performer uh again it's it's listening to the, the crowd and knowing what that need at that, that particular time well, that will make you a great entertainer. You can be a great wrestler, like Booker said, but until you're a great entertainer, you, you don't really hit that that peak that you want. Um, so I guess that's one of the biggest things that is just 
slow down, take it all in, and give the fans what they want. And you're going to give the fans what they want, I'm sure, this Saturday at the Royal Rumble, Fatal 4-Way, Undisputed WWE Universal Championship. You know, you talked about Roman Reigns, Randy Orton's career is for himself. L.A. Knight is somebody who's really come around in the last year, even though he's been doing it for a long time. Um, for, for you, what do you think the appeal is of a L.A. Knight? Do you think it's just it's right place, right time for him to really have the crowd get behind him? I think that it definitely is the right place at the right time, saying the right thing that they can go along with. And, and yeah, it's such a, a simple thing to come up with that he does perfectly and gets people going with him. I mean, it, it's time. It was time. You know, he's worked hard his whole career. And why not make this one his biggest and best? And uh, perseverance, I think, with LA Knight, it's, it's really showed here because – it took him a while, and I know exactly how that feels to get where he wanted to be and, and do what he wants to do, and he's definitely doing it. Um, we've talked about how you're widely regarded as one of the greatest of all time you know, in the ring, and it's not just something that the fans say. It's something that your peers share as well. Stone Cold Steve Austin said you're the best wrestler on two feet. The Undertaker said you're probably the best in the business, and, and Paul Heyman said he is everything that Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, and Ric Flair to their generation, but he's updated it. How does it feel to hear that kind of praise from legends in this industry? Oh, wow. It makes you feel like all this work, all these years that you've put into the business has paid off for someone to respect and say those things that, you know, you've done and who you are. It means a lot. It really does. Cause that's who you're really trying to impress. That's the guys that I would love for them to say something that they have. Uh, so I feel like I've accomplished something, you know, like it's never going to be good enough for me. But the fact that they had those kind of words to say, it takes a cake. Now, um, again, we're on the road to WrestleMania. Um, it's a, a show that you've gotten to perform on several times, getting to wrestle at per several times with top names, including The Undertaker. Um, do you ever sit back and go, wow, I can't believe that I had The Undertaker's last match and it was at WrestleMania? Is that something you still think about? <laughs> Uh, every now and then, um, you know, cause we're, we're friends to this day, but, uh, every now and then I, wow. You know, as I look back, that was a really cool moment that we had. And um, I was, I was able to have his last match. Not, nobody else can say that just me. So that's a big deal. Um, with Royal Rumble is going down this weekend, Saturday on Peacock, AJ Styles in the fatal four ways, walking out with the title, AJ. I just really appreciate you taking the time with us this morning. You are phenomenal. You are one of the greatest to ever do, and I can't wait to see that championship back around your waist at the conclusion of the Saturday night. Hey, you never know what's going to happen, but uh, I'm not saying bet on it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. AJ Styles, everybody. Thank you so much, man. Bye, man.